नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टीज लाइव फोन एंड इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम आई एम तनवी खुराना एंड ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु आर स्टडिंग इन क्लास टेंथ एंड योर फेवरेट सब्जेक्ट इज साइंस देन प्लीज ट्यून इन विद आस यू कैन वॉच दिस प्रोग्राम लाइव ऑन ई विद चैनल नंबर टेन एंड द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज लाइट reflection and refraction because this is a big lesson we are going to take it in parts and this is the first part of this particular topic if you have any questions any queries please reach out to us simply call us on our number that is 8800440559 and if you want to email us the email id would be dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in it's a very simple process and all the methods through which you can contact us are being shown on your screens in the form of ticker and they'll be there throughout this program so please raise your questions if you have any and let me please and introduce you to our guest for today we have with us mr burgin sir a very warm welcome to you uh thank you ma'am thank you in thank ncert you. textbook uh the in the physics topic there is one lesson light reflection and refraction right in that in that lesson there are two parts one is reflection of light on the mirror and another is refraction of light on lenses right today we are going to deal with the reflection of light on mirrors okay so before we begin this discussion let me please introduce you to all our get audience uh, sir is pgt in physics from government boys higher secondary school sailguri tamil nadu so uh, now let's begin with the first part like sir said that uh, the first part uh, we are going to take up today so sir uh, now shall we begin the discussion please yes ma'am we can start so the objectives of the session is at the end of the session the students grasp the fundamental concept of reflection including the laws of reflection understand how concave convex mirrors from real and virtual images enhance analytical skills by solving physics problems related to mirrors according to the subjectives i classify the topics into some categories first we are going reflection spherical mirrors image formation ray diagrams and finally the use of mirrors these are the topics that we are dealing today let us start with law of let us start with the laws of reflection so here is a plain mirror when a incident a ray of light it is reflected if i draw a perpendicular so as you can see on your screens uh, laws of reflection spherical mirrors and uh, image formation along with and multiple topics that we are going to take up today sir can you hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am you okay. can hear it sir uh, could you please continue talking ma'am yes sir can you hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am i can hear you okay sir can you please continue from where you have left Yes, yes, yes. I will yep. continue. Uh, <clears throat> this incident ray hmm. is reflected on the surface. Okay. Angle between the normal and the incident ray is angle of incident, hmm. and uh, angle between the reflected ray and the normal is called the angle of reflection. Okay. There is a relationship between these two: angle of incident and the angle of reflection. That is the first law of reflection. That is, angle of incident should be equal to angle of reflection. If the angle of incidence is 30 degree, then the angle of reflection is also 30 degree. Wherever you need this, uh, wherever you are using this reflection, you have to obey. The light should obey the law of reflection. And not only in uh, flat surface, if the surface is curved, there also these laws obey. The second law is the incident ray, the normal and to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray lie on the same plane for example this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray and this is the normal these three are lie on a same plane that is the meaning suppose you are doing one experiment 
uh, with a glass slab and paper and uh, if you draw the lines you will get all the lines are uh, on the same plane on that paper so these are the two laws which can be applied wherever reflection takes place we look for the plane mirror now we, uh, the topic is deal with the spherical mirrors in the plane mirror topic you deal with in the lower classes here you are going shifted to spherical mirrors these mirrors are called spherical because now look at this here is a mirror it has a curved surface and another rough surface uh, the light can reflect on the curved surface here the reflecting surface is curved inwards and here the reflecting surface is curved outwards inward if the reflecting surface is curved inward it is called concave mirror uh, look at this it looks like cave so it is called concave mirror here the surfaces look curve outwards so it is called convex mirror these mirrors are called spherical mirror because if you complete this part of the mirror with a line you will get a sphere in 3d in 2d it looks like a circle but in 3d it looks like a sphere so since it is a part of a sphere we can call this part as a spherical mirrors so there are two types of spherical mirror one is called concave mirror and another is one is called convex mirror now let us we can use some uh, terms used in spherical mirror this is the pole of the spherical mirror pole is the part of pole is the midpoint of its reflecting surface this is the reflecting surface of the convex mirror at the center point of the, the this point is called pole for concave mirror this point is called pole and uh, if you consider that circle the center of the circle is called uh, curvature therefore center of curvature is the center of that imaginary sphere of which the mirror is a part now if i connect this pole and the center of curvature we will get a straight line that straight line is called the principal axis and uh, the distance between the center of curvature and the principal pole the distance between the center of curvature and the pole is called the radius of curvature then if a parallel beams are fall on the reflecting surface of a concave mirror it will merge on a particular point that point is called the focus so the point on principal axis where all the parallel rays are actually meet is called the principal focus distance between the pole and focus here uh, pole is p in this point and uh, f is the principal focus pf is the distance between these two points this pf is called focal length and if you take convex lens if a parallel ray fall on the convex surface it will emerge out of the convex surface so it will not meet at a point but we extend these two lines it will meet at a point uh, we can call this as a focus so uh, for convex lens it will not converge at a point but they appears to meet after reflection here after reflection if you extend the line the they are appears to meet at the point f therefore this f is called principal focus in terms of convex lens. the distance between the pole and the focus is called focal length so discussing the four basic rules the ray diagram rules and if you also have something to add up to these rules is there any explanation that uh, you want to know any clarity that uh, you want to have regarding the four rules regarding the ray diagram rules then please reach out to us so we are studying light reflection and refraction and like i said that this is the first part and we are going to cover certain topics in this particular part 
part and we will be continuing uh, some other parts in the second version, second session of the same topic. So please reach out to us and uh, you can call us, you can mail us, you are watching us on our YouTube channels as well yeah. at uh, this moment NCERT PME with their channel number 10. This is where you are watching at the moment. So uh, sir will be joining us again. Uh, sir, are you with us right now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, ma'am, our main objective is to learn the relationship between images and object in a uh, mirrors. We are uh, relating this with the help of ray diagrams. In order to know the ray diagram, we need some basic rules. There are four basic rules. If you know all the four basic rules, it is easy to draw the ray diagram. Any type of ray diagram can be drawn if you know the four rules. Here there are the first four rules are there. Rule number one, any parallel, any parallel to principal axis will pass through the focus after reflection. Now look at this, a ray of light is coming from infinite distance. That means a parallel ray is coming from infinity. It will pass through the focus. This is the first rule that we have to know. So while we are drawing some ray diagram, if a ray is coming parallel to the principal axis, it should pass through the focus. That is the first rule we have to know. Now the second rule is, before going to the second rule, uh, initially we saw the law of reflection. But law of reflection not only obey at the plane surface, it also obey the in the curved surface. Here, this is the center of curvature. If you draw a line between center of curvature and the sphere or this part of the uh, reflecting surface, it is normal. Everyone know. So this is the normal for the curved surface. Angle between normal and the incident ray is called the angle of incidence. Uh, angle between reflected ray and the normal is angle of reflection. Both of these angle of incident and the angle of reflection are equal. It should be equal. Uh, wherever it reflects, it obey the law. Then rule number two, the reverse of the rule number one. If a ray of light is passing through F, it will emerge out as a parallel axis along the, which is parallel to the principal axis. So a ray passing through the principal focus of concave mirror will emerge parallel to the principal axis after reflection. So this is the second rule. Third rule, in the sec here also, this is the normal, this is the angle of incident, and this is angle of reflection. Uh, this angle sh of reflection should be equal to the angle of incident, that is law of reflection. So rule three, uh, if a ray is passing through the center of curvature, for example, it, here it passes through the center of curvature, the reflected ray also passes through the same path. That means the ray passing through the center of curvature of a concave mirror gets reflected in the same path. So while you are drawing a ray diagram, when a ray of light is passing through the center of curvature, it should uh, return back in the same path. That you have to know. The last rule is uh, the ray incident obliquely to the principal axis the incident and the reflected ray follow the loss of reflection at the point of incidence. So um, here, this is the P, P is the point of incident. A ray of light is incident on the point and it is reflected. This angle of incident should be equal to the angle of reflection. So these are the four rules that can be used to construct ray diagram uh, wherever you need it. Now let us uh, create some image formation by concave mirror. So first uh, let us take object placed at infinity. So we are keeping on object infinity. What is meant by infinity? Infinity means if you are doing some practicals in a lab, a distant object or distant tree outside the lab is taken as infinity. Anything we cannot able to measure uh, at that particular time, that can be taken as infinity. Infinity means a little uh, long or very big value uh, like that. So uh, if you take a concave mirror and place it in lab, a distant tree is an infinity point. Here also, 
we are keeping an object at infinity. So this is the center of curvature C, and uh, this is the principal focus F. And uh, when an object is placed at the uh, distant object is placed at infinity, and the light rays drawn from the distant object is taken as parallel rays. So we are drawing a two parallel lines from A and B. A, B is the object. Uh, for example, it may be a tree or man, anything we see that is an object. Here we are uh, drawing a ray diagram, so the object is considered as a ray. So uh, this, since it is placed in infinity, we are drawing the parallel ray. These parallel rays are reflected on the surface. So uh, here, this is the uh, reflecting surface. It will reflect and uh, according to rule number one, whenever there is a ray, parallel ray reflecting on a surface, it should pass through the principal focus. So it will pass through the principal focus. Uh, what about the image? Uh, that means when an object is placed at infinity, what about the image? Image is formed at the principal focus. Now look at the diagram. The image is on the principal focus and it is a real image. Re what is a real, real image? Real image means uh, if any image that can be captured on a screen, it is called a real image. While in a plane mirror, we are looking to the plane mirror, our image is seen inside the plane mirror. That is virtual image. If you uh, keep a mirror and uh, uh, you, uh, you change it according to the distance, if the image is obtained on the screen, that means if the image is obtained on the wall or any screen, that is called uh, real image. Here also you will get re real image. You can capture the image on a screen. You can't able to see inside the mirror, but it can be captured on a screen. That is real image. It is highly diminished because here uh, it has some length, but after reflection, it is lo look like a point because it is merging at a particular point. So it is highly diminished. So. Uh, wherever, if you some question is asked, what happens when an image is placed at infinity in a concave mirror? You, you can uh, explain what is the nature of the image, how the image is obtained by drawing this uh, ray diagram. So next, we can uh, see what happens when an object is placed beyond the center of curvature. So here, this is the center of curvature. Center of curvature is a place where uh, if you draw complete this uh, uh, spherical curved mirror into sphere, the center is called the center of curvature. So this is the center of curvature. An object is placed beyond the center of curvature. That means beyond the center of curvature, we place that object AB. Now we can ray, we can draw the ray diagram. From A, I draw a parallel line, which is parallel to the principal axis. When, whenever a ray parallel to the principal axis and a, it gets reflected, it goes along the principal focus. This is rule number one. So according to the rule number one, it goes to the principal focus. So uh, for getting an image, you need two rays. Since it is parallel uh, infinity, in the last case, it is in infinity. So we can uh, draw two parallel lines and get a, a converged image. Here, it is not at infinity. Here it is at a finite distance. So we need two rays. First ray, we draw parallel ray and it is passed through the F. Second ray, we can make it pass through the center of curvature. So both of them will meet at this point. You will get the image at this point. So here A1, B1 is the image of A and B, AB. A1, B1 is the image of AB. Now compare the image it is inverted. Here, uh, AB is in the upward direction. Here, it is downward. So, image is inverted and it is real. So, we can study the nature of the image like this. Image formed between C and F. So, where image is formed, uh, this is C, this is F. So, image is formed between C and F. So, wherever position you place the object beyond the center of curvature, you will get the image between C and F. That is the point you have to remember. Then, real and inverted. Look at the image. The image is real. Why real? Because 
we can capture that image on a screen, inverted. By looking at the image, you can see clearly view that it is inverted, it is diminished, it becomes small. Uh, when comparing these two, it will diminish. So this is the nature of the image when an object is placed beyond C. So when an object is placed at the center of curvature, what happens? If I placed here, uh, here also I can draw two lines. One is parallel ray, then it will reflect it on the reflecting surface and pass through the principal focus. Another ray, it is, we can't be able to draw through C. So I pass a line through the focus point. According to rule number two, when a ray is passed through the principal focus, it should reflect it parallel to the principal axis, according to rule number two. So you can apply the second rule at this point. So now these two rays are meet at this point meet at this point. We can draw the image here. Look at the image. Image is obtained at the point C. Also, it gets inverted. Uh, we can study the nature of the image like this. So image is formed at C, real and inverted. It is real and it is inverted. Uh, what about size of the object? It is same size as the object. So this is the uh, second uh, <coughs> category of this condition. Then third one is object is placed in focus and center of curvature. What, what happens when object is placed if, uh, between F and C? We are shifting the object from left to right. Now we are placing the object between F and uh, C. So I keep the object very small. Uh, AB is the object. Now we, I am drawing two lines. One line which is parallel to the principal axis. After reflection, it will pass through the principal focus. Uh, this is rule number one. Second light, we want to pass through the uh, center of curvature after reflection. So uh, I, I draw this line. It will This light ray is reflected at the point D and comes back and passes through the center of curvature. Even though we, you can draw directly through C, but the real picture is like this only. It will reflect at the point D and come back at through C. So they will meet at this point. They will meet at this point. We can draw the image here. Image obtained is B1, A1. So now look, compare the image. The image is formed beyond C. It, the image is formed beyond C. So wherever you keep the object between F and C, you will get the image beyond C then it is real and inverted, bigger than the object. So um, you can easily draw any type of ray diagram if you know the rules. Now you are placing the object placed at the focus. Focus. So one line is parallel and it passes through the principal focus. In the similar way, we can draw the second line. It will reflect at the point E and comes back and passes through C. These two lines never meet. They will meet at infinity only. So what is the nature of the image? Image is formed at infinity, real and inverted, very big size. You will get a very big size. Since uh, Im image is obtained at infinity, it is very big in size. So next condition is object is placed between focus and pole. Now object is placed between focus and pole. Two rays, one ray is reflected at the pole and it goes like this. Here, angle of incidence should be equal to angle of reflection because it can reflect it any direction, but it will, will not go like that. It should reflect it in such a way that angle of incidence should be equal to angle of reflection. Then second ray, the, by a similar way, it will reflect at that point and passes through the C. These two rays are diverge and they will never meet. But we extend these two lines, it will meet at this point. So uh, we will get the image at the point A1, B1. So look at this image. Image is uh, inside the mirror, that is opposite to the reflecting surface. And uh, you cannot be able to catch it on a, a screen. So the image is formed behind the mirror. It is virtual. Why it is virtual means it is on the back side of the uh, mirror, behind the mirror. So 
we cannot able to capture in a screen. It is erect, uh, not inverted. Uh, size of the object also going big. So these, uh, all these uh, uh, different uh, positions of the image uh, can be, you can do it on your, if you have one spoon with you. If you take a spoon, uh, one surface is curved inwards and uh, another surface is curved outwards. Outward surface is called convex and inward surface is called uh, concave. So if you look at the mirror like this, you will get different type of image. You can check with this ray diagram in your home uh, and uh, verify you will get the image or not. The invert... Um, certain mirrors uh, which show us uh, very different kind of uh, our reflections. So yes, yes, what yes, are those kind of mirrors? Uh, there are multiple types. What are those yes, types? Yes. Uh, they are different size. So, so if some, some people are standing before the uh, screen, they look like big yeah. or look like thin. That is because of the different type of image formed because of the different types of uh, positions of the object. Therefore, the uh, image can be obtained changed according to the position of the object. If you stand at different places, it uh, looks like different. Not only position, it is also different types of mirrors. Uh, because next uh, title is image formed by the convex mirror. It is something different. Uh, this is convex mirror because the reflecting surface is here. This is the blue color is the reflecting surface. Uh, this reflecting surface is outwards. So it is a convex surface. This is the center of gravity. This is the center of curvature of the lens. Now look at here. Uh, a object is placed uh, at infinity. Uh, parallel rays are coming. These rays are not. Uh, this rays we cannot be able to focus on a single point because it gets diverged. Okay, so ma'am asked to one question. Yes, sir, can we please Some... continue uh, the same in the next part because we don't have much time left, and as we know that there is okay, another okay. part coming, we can always continue. Okay, okay. This since it is uh, diverging, uh, so our image looks like different. That is the thing. The ma'am asked one question. Okay. Uh, different shape. So we can get different shape because of the position and also the uh, type of mirror. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, okay. for thank answering you. the query. And uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, indeed, we learned a lot about the different kinds of reflections and the different kinds of mirrors as well. Thank you so much for being with us today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers for being with us today. And uh, we studied light, reflection and refraction. And this was the first part of this topic. We will continue the same in the next part very soon. So till then, please raise your questions if you have any. We are ending this science class right here, right now. But the um, upcoming program is an English program for all the students who are studying in class 10th only. And the lesson that we are going to study is called a letter to God. So please be here and uh, raise your questions if you have any. Thank you so much. Keep on watching Evidya channels. I am Tanvi Khurana and I will take a leave of you. Have a good day ahead. Namaskar.